I think it's the um, the reverence. I think it's what I mean. I think it's the kind of shame. You know, classics can be a bit of a shame culture, um, and um, there are things. You know, you you see this when you interview students because we still interview potential undergraduates. Um, you know, to go back a bit to Virgil, um, you know, you know, at the end of a long day, one of the things you might say, you know, it's a mistake, it's a question, you just know it's a mistake. You know, oh, what's your favourite Latin author? Right. <laughs> and they, uh, a, a common choice, because they think it's a right choice, it's Virgil. Oh, and so why is that? The language and the structure. And you think, you don't believe a word of this, sunshine. You know, so what do you mean by the language? Oh, the way he uses language, it's brilliant. And you think, you haven't got the fight, you know, what? So would you recognise Latin being used badly? You know, what, what's the difference? You know, how would you know? You know, I can't always tell this, often tell this, you know, and it's deeply subjective, and I've been doing it for 50 years, mate. So don't tell me this. And I think there's a kind of, the sense of um, hiding behind shibboleths. You know, that it's not allowed to say that you think Plato is awful. Um, you know, there are some things, you know, you're allowed, there are some things you're allowed to kind of criticise, some things you're, and there's still a kind of sense of, of um, a, a subject, a discipline, and a culture which is protecting some things and not looking at others. I mean, I think over my career we've been, you know, we've been quite good at looking at. I, either looking carefully at things we hadn't looked at before and facing up to things that we don't like about the classical world and people who, and we don't like about people who've studied classics, plenty of those. Um, but there's still kind of, you know, there's st it's still a kind of slight reverence about it. And uh, you notice it in a completely different area, but it's, it's sort of somehow grounded in the same thing. You notice it when... If you're on television and you touch some, you touch an ancient sculpture, actually, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't touch an ancient sculpture. But people have been taught you should only touch the ancient world wearing gloves. Right? And so they're right to you, and they'll say, you weren't wearing gloves. Um, and, you know, I've learned now to say, we follow the procedures of the museum and concern, and many museums are very happy. But you see that, well, this isn't, you know, you know these people who are writing down have a foggy's clue about conservation and what the different rubrics of conservation are. But they somehow think the ancient world is there that, to be treated very carefully. Um, I was talking to a young architect designer, you know, the other day, done some really interesting work in um, recreating in digital ceramics um, monuments of Rome, and he was really eloquent about it, saying, "You know, that you know, why did he like Rome? He liked being in Rome because, um, you know, the history was now. You didn't have to treat it in gloves. You know, there were people snogging on." column capitals that would be in the British Museum if they're in the British Museum. You know, you go to a gay nightclub and it's in a and it's in the Roman baths. You know, that there is something about the kind of fearlessness that the city of Rome brings out in you. That is something that we, you know, we think that ought to be treated very politely. Um, and I think so if I if there's a mission it's you know it's in a way that is also and it, that comes out, I think, in quite quite a lot of ways. I mean, in terms of what we're not prepared to say about what we can and can't do. I mean, to tell people we cannot translate these cities, look, we cannot translate it. All this stuff that that you know, kind of, rather, tends to be rather right wing, sort of strategic colleges are teaching about. You know, they're using a completely wrong nineteenth century translation that happens to be available for free on the internet. Right? And actually, what's exciting about this is is we can't make sense of this. You know, that's okay. and it's okay. You know, it's okay to say that. And so, you know, yeah. If if I've got, you know, it's it's kind of undermining the sort of po-faced cant that we 
sometimes, I mean, Kant, C-A-N-T, not K-A, um, that we sometimes approach the ancient world, you know, with. And, I, you know, I do think, um, you know, I do think we're all, you know, in danger of being victims of that. And, I, and I, you, you, know, you know, as I've said, I think that, you know, I would like, I would like people to read what I've read and enjoyed over my life about the ancient world and I would like to see them kind of see that through a liberal and left-wing perspective such that I see it through I would that's what I you know I would like that but you know we we can't con- you know this it's a it's a free country and and I think the, that we've got to find ways of of making sure people don't misuse history because to some extent I think that as a, as a historian I've got some kind of responsibility to a bit of quality control you know, like as with Aaron Bax if you say that I'm going to say that you're wrong darling um, but you know it's classics is out there and I mean the alt-right have just as much right to it as we do even if they're wrong sadly you know I'd like to brush Talib in the alt right, right off Twitter, I'd be rightfully pleased. But that's, you know, the bottom line is that if this is going to be a subject that really goes on meaning things to people, then it's going to mean things to people we don't much like. I'm afraid. <laughs>